Hi, welcome to the Corner of Knit and Tea, episode 466. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram, Twitter, and Blue Sky. I blog over at the Corner of Knit and Tea.com, which is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. And I have an Etsy shop called the Corner of Knit and Tea where I sell my hand spun yarn and patterns. Hi, how are you? I hope that you are doing well. It is Monday, March 18th. I can hardly believe we're more than halfway through the month now. Um, the spring is just um, opening up. Our, uh, officially, it becomes spring tomorrow, March 19th this year. And um, this weekend, the uh, summer run or the spring and summer runs start every spring. My husband and I uh, sign up for a series of runs here in Kansas City. He does um, three half marathons and I do a 5k, 10k, 5k at each of those. Um, sorry, 5k at the first, 10k at the second, 5k at the third. Um, and so it's kind of this spring series of runs that we do. Uh, the uh, Knit for Food Knit-a-thon is this coming weekend. And then um, there is our local guild puts on a knitting convention in April. So all the weekends between here and the end of April are pretty much booked with social activities, which is lots and lots of fun. Um, and also like, wow, how are we this far into the year? So I hope that you're doing well and that you are having a good um, crafty time. I did a lot of crafting this week. Some of it knitting, some of it sewing, some of it successful, some of it very not successful. Um, I did some things yesterday while sewing that I wish I hadn't done. Um, and I won't be able to show them all to you now. Some of them I'm sort of preparing for a blog post for my uh, job. Um, and some of them will not make it into that blog post. And I will share everything in a few weeks once that's kind of all set and squared away. Um, so it's it's nothing super exciting. I'm just doing a few little sewing projects. And like I said, I had more success with some than others. <laughs> Um, and it's not that I'm per se embarrassed about um, my efforts at it. It's that um, I require a certain standard of, I guess we'll say competence, um, that I want to show in the blog. And the fact that I am not that competent a sewist yet means that some of the samples that I made I will definitely not be using. So I do have a few and um, I'm learning a lot. Uh, I got about halfway through the project that did not turn out well yesterday and went, why did I think I could do this just yet? Like it definitely was more complicated than I should have put myself up for. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> So that's how things are going here. I hope that you're doing well. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Let's get into the tea today. So the tea that I'm drinking today was a sample from a friend and actually I finished it and it was just in a Ziploc bag so that doesn't help. Um, it is a tea that was from um, David's Teas and it doesn't look like they have it anymore. It was called Deep Boo Deep Blue Spirulina and it had a variety of um, herbs and flowers in it and um, the uh, uh, the uh, ingredient that made it most memorable is butterfly pea flower because it actually turns the tea a little bit blue. So it's a little hard to tell, but if you can see in my mug, let's see if I can, ooh, I'm having trouble. Let's see if I can, okay. So you, can, you can't really see. It's blue. Ooh. That was not um, the most elegant. You can see I propped my phone up on some things. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm drinking tea that's a little bit blue, um, but naturally occurring blue as a result of flowers. And um, it's got kind of a lemony taste with a little bit of berries in it. I really like it. It doesn't look like it's there anymore. So I suppose I'm not sure exactly why I'm like reviewing it with you. Um, but and I'm drinking it in the bean mug, which is a local coffee house to me. So that's really good. Like I said, it's kind of lemony. It's a little sweet. I did add some sweetener to it. It's a little bit berry. It's a little bit floral. It's a really nice spring mix. I was really looking for something that, that screamed spring. So let's talk about the knits. I have a couple finished things. So the first thing that I have finished is I finished my mittens. So these are the Snowberry Mitts by Kalora Hudson, and um, they are a um, pretty simple knit pattern that has some bobbles and some one-by-one -one cables. Unfortunately, the pattern is only available on Ravelry. I wish she offered her patterns off of Ravelry, but she does not at present, and I had this um, from, I purchased it earlier on, um, so I apologize. 
I knit these in um, Malabrigo Rios in Reflecting Pool, and then I held them doubled with some Suri, uh, Suri Alpaca and Silk that I used in a sweater that I knit last year. So I didn't quite finish this game of the Suri Alpaca. I also didn't quite finish the Reflecting Pool, although I have plans for the Reflecting Pool um, to go into some mittens because it's, um, it's, uh, DK slash worsted weight, and so I'm very, um, well, so it was, um, Malabrigo Arroyo, which is worsted weight, and so I'll be using that in some, um, mittens that I'll be knitting later this year. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with these. Um, they are warm and cozy. They are just a little bit big for me. They look like they fit about right, but I have a little extra room at the fingertips, and they're a little bit wide. Um, I can't decide whether I'll put a liner in there to make them snugger, or if I'm just gonna go ahead and leave them as they are. And, um, <laughs> this this berry got out of control up here. But, um, so I am looking forward to wearing them in the cool season, which is not really now. So, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and photograph these, and then I'm gonna put them away in my stash for next year, um, in my stash of knitted goods for next year, but I'm really, really glad to have made those, and I'm glad to have used up some leftovers in my stash in a color that I absolutely love. So, um, as I said, the, the Surrey Alpaca and Silk was from a sweater that I knit this past fall, and actually the, uh, Malabrigo was also from a sweater that I knit, um, a little earlier, probably summertime, um, it was a sweater for my niece. So little bits and bobs left over, but otherwise mostly used up. And that was kind of a fun project. The other thing that I got through this week is I uh, didn't have a chicken this past week to work on, or at least not till Friday. I go pick up, I go drop off and pick up on Fridays. So if I don't get something new, I basically have between Saturday and Thursday to work on whatever I want. And so this week I worked on my chicken feathers and I got a little three done. So this is, these are feathers for my chicken at the City Girl Farm. If um, I've talked about this a lot on here. Um, if you go to the website, thecitygirlfarm.com, um, they are artistic um, chicken footstools, and um, you'll see that many of them are knitted and felted, and I am knitting one for myself. Um, I work there on commission. Well, I work on, not on commission, I work there um, as a contractor, basically knitting uh, some of the stuff that they put on those chickens. And if you have worked there for long enough, um, you get a chicken in trade. And so I am working on covering my chicken um, with my knitting. And this is some, um, it is some yarn that I picked up at Ply Away uh, quite a while ago. And then I am striping it with my hand spun, which is Enchilada Night from Hello Yarn on Rambouillet. And um, it is really pretty. It's got yellows and greens and kind of russet oranges and purples um and it's just really really nice I know this looks like I'm giving you the finger which makes me laugh um and then I also did a four one so um I did one of the bigger ones so I was very pleased with that and so that brings me up to 20 stacks of feathers and I really need to have 30 before we can start putting it together um so I am about two-thirds of the way there which I'm really not because they will need some wings and some other pieces um but uh these are by far the most time intensive and the part I um I enjoy knitting the least and so in this case I am definitely all about the product that's going to be finished and not so much on the process um, but I am happy to be moving along and to have forward progress and uh, I think I'll finish my chicken sometime this year so that will be um, great and then I don't know where she's going to live um, but probably on the stands back here or I'm gonna figure out something because she's gonna be my buddy in our podcast chats as well so yeah Okay, so those are the two things that I quote finished this week. Um, what else did I work on? I worked on my mosaic blanket. This is the mosaic blanket by Pearl Soho um, and it is a free pattern on their website. I have that linked in the show notes and I am knitting this for my niece and her husband uh, to commemorate their first anniversary since I couldn't make it in time for their wedding. And I am using two colorways of Barocco, which is, um, 100% not natural yarn. It's a mix of acrylic and nylon, I think. Um, but they have two uh, rescue pit bulls. And so my concern with knitting them a uh, blanket that was wool or um, 
I really wanted a blanket that was going to be easy care because um, their dogs are adorable, but they are rambunctious. And um, I figured everybody was going to be snuggling up on the couch with these blankets. And I just wanted to be sure that they could be easy care, that they would look good for a while. And um, sometimes acrylic fits the bill. So I am using Barocco Comfort in two colors. These are almost their wedding colors. This one is beetroot and this one is licorice. And I am putting them together in the mosaic blanket. And I got through a couple more pattern repeats this week which means um, I now have like a really good chunk of the blanket done. And I got through the first two skeins. So this actually is two skeins, um, one of each color, and I have 12. <laughs> so 12 total. So six of each color. Um, so this is approximately one sixth of the blanket. And actually I haven't measured it. Let's measure it. And I may actually order more. Um, basically, I want this blanket to be able to cover both of them when they're snuggling on the couch. So like, it's not going to be like king size bed or anything, but I want it to be at least probably uh, five feet long, 60 inches. Um, and I don't know exactly how wide it is. I cast on what I thought would be sufficient. Um, it looks like I've got between eight and nine inches right now. Um, so eight times uh, six is 48. So I probably will buy a couple more sets um, of the two colors so that I can keep going even if it's going to be kind of long and skinny. I don't really know. Let's see if I can get what it is across. I don't think I ended up um, with as much across as I really wanted. I probably should have cast on a few more, but I'm already far enough in that I don't want to rip back. So I think I'm just going to keep going at the length that I am. So let's see here. On the width, it looks like I'm doing a half width here. I just folded it in half to make it easy. It looks like the half width is um, about 22 inches. So that's gonna be about 44. So I think it's gonna be about 44 by 60, which is not exactly as big as I wanted it, but I think it's as big as I'm going to knit it. Um, <laughs> Or I might just um, stop at like 52 or 56. I'll, I'll have to see. I'm going to get a little further, see how long it is, um, see what happens. Um, like acrylic won't really wash and block, so I don't expect it to either shrink or expand that much. Um, so I will probably keep an eye on that and then sort of make a decision and order what I need. I'm not super concerned about... Um, about dye lots um, because it is commercial yarn and I will be ordering it fairly close to the time that I ordered the original, although maybe I should just order some more now. Maybe I will order more now. Um, and I can mix things up towards the end if I need to, to sort of make it blend. The other thing is that with the mosaic pattern, such as it is, I think it breaks it up enough that, um, well, hopefully there wouldn't be a big line. I guess I guess I need to order more now um, because I did not, I ordered enough to make the largest size that the pattern calls for, which I think is a 44 by 48, I think, um, or maybe 52. I, I don't know. Um, I know that I made mine wider, so maybe it's 40 by 48. I can't remember. Um, I know I made mine a little bit wider and I want to make it a little bit longer, so I'm going to need to order more yarn. So that's, that's the moral behind that. So that is what I'm working on. It will continue to be a project. Um, I don't know how often I'll bring it back. I don't have a lot that I'm working on right now. So um, I'm bringing it back to show you that I'm working on something. Um, but it's really not that exciting because it's the same pattern over and over and over again. So the other thing I worked on just a little bit more this week and not as much. This is the only thing that I really wanted to get more done before I came and talked to you and I did not is I am making um, some mittens and I have been sort of on a mitten kick this year. Mostly I'm making them to donate. The blue pair that I just showed you were for me um, but everything else that I've made this year is to donate and my intention is to keep making mittens to donate throughout the year. Might make one more set for me. I can't decide. I have yarn left over from when I did um, the Anne of Green Cables hat um, from um, Sarah Shira, the gnome hat that I did a month or two ago. And I have enough left that I could do matching mittens if I wanted to, and I could do like the cable motif on the back of the hand. So I haven't decided if, um, and actually I think she has a pattern for mitts that go with that, but I can't remember. Um, so I could do that if I wanted to, and I haven't decided if I want a matching hat and mitten set. Um, if not, I'll just use that and knit some other mittens. So, because I have plenty left over. Anyway, I am knitting 
and I even pulled the pattern this time. It is called the Little Garter Checks Men's Mittens by the Bead Knitter. Um, and that is a pattern that unfortunately I only saw it on Ravelry. It's a free download, um, which is why I kind of decided to do it. Um, when I knit mittens or socks or whatnot for um, charity, I do try and knit a variety of sizes um, because obviously people are all different sizes and I tend to run on the small side of things, particularly for mittens. Um, so this is a men's mitten pattern and it is quite a bit bigger than what I normally knit for me. Um, but my assumption is that there will be at least a few people who will need to keep um, large hands warm. And so that is what I am doing. I am using leftover yarn from Zen Yarn Garden from another project. It is their Nightshade Worsted. Um, and they may still have a little bit of this on the site, but they are going out of business and they are putting up everything they've got. So if you see something and want it, now would be the time. Um, this is their Nightshade Worsted in the colorway Maple. And the difference about nightshade is it has one um it is a marled yarn and it has one strand that is black which gives it that marled look and um I think the yarn and the pattern are somewhat distracting of each other so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this but this is called the little garter checked I think you can kind of see it so it's basically a broken rib pattern where you've got a knit two purl two in there and then you've also got some sections that are just knit and um I had finished the cuff when we last talked so I put a couple inches on it last night and I am you can see um before the stitch marker I am into the thumb gusset um one thing that I find really interesting about these mittens is they literally have you create the gusset out of nothing you start with a make one and then you make one on either side of that and blah 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 ad infinitum well not ad infinitum because you stop at a certain number of stitches but they have you basically put the thumb gusset right between the first and the last stitch on the mitten so that means I can knit the two mittens exactly identical and um the thumb gusset will be at the right spot on either one of them um so that's kind of nice for me just because I don't have to keep track of a right and a left mitten um so you can kind of see the check pattern there and then you can see that the um the gusset for the thumb is in stockinette so I'm not very far in that. I definitely want to finish um, finish at least one mitten this week. And actually what I'd really like to do um, is I'm doing the, the Knit for Food Knit-a-thon this coming weekend. And my plan during the Knit-a-thon is to work on a bunch of um, pairs of mittens. My hope is that I'll get at least one knit, maybe more. Um, and I have bags of leftover um, bits and bobs of worsted and DK weight in all different colors and so my plan is to work on stripey mittens during the um, knit-a-thon and then I have some gray and I have some green and I have a couple other colors where I have enough that I could probably do cuffs in them or I know there's some black in here um, so my plan is to create really beautiful colorful mittens um, stripey mittens and then I'll have them to donate later in the year and I've been waiting to use these fun colors because I can't wait to dig into them all um, but but I figured I would do that as part of my charity knitting. So that's kind of the plan on those. Um, and I'm excited to do that this coming weekend. So I don't know if I'll finish this set because what I may do is I may finish the first and then I may steal the needles from it and um, put them into some of those other mittens because um, I'm using uh, I'm using size 7 DPNs and um, worsted weight yarn to create a variety of sets of mittens. I don't know what patterns. My guess is the stripey mittens will just be like fairly, um, I'll just pick a um, simple matter, simple mitt, simple mitten pattern and then just stripe the colors as I wish. So and I haven't decided whether I'm going to do really really thin stripes or whether I'm going to do chunky blocky stripes. Haven't decided yet, not sure. Um, and so that's kind of what I'll be working on in the next couple weeks is trying to crank out a couple pairs of mittens. Um, and then the only other project I have kind of on the horizon is I started a top called the Applesauce Top last year. Um, and it is kind of a crossover um, tank or tea. And um, I only got a little bit of ways into that before the, um, before it got to be not tea weather because I cast on probably in like August or September and then all of a sudden it got chilly and all I wanted to do was knit winter knits. So I wanna pull that out and finish it. And the other thing that I did last year and I've been looking at patterns is um, a friend of mine started dyeing up um, bamboo and, is it silk? 
or is it just no it's a linen bamboo blend and um i knit a top for myself out of it last year and uh really really loved it and i went ahead and uh bought <laughs> another set of yarn from her in other colors and I would like to do um, another kind of linen bamboo top tee for the summer. So um, my plan is to maybe get those going in the next couple months because I would really like to um, kind of knit and be able to wear them over the summer. I am not actually doing sweaters for my niece and nephew this year. Those of you who have been with me for a while know that often I start planning the kids sweaters early in the year for their fall birthdays and um I decided this year that I am going to get them some other kinds of gifts. I've been knitting sweaters for them since they were babies um, and they are, well this year they'll be 11 and 8 and um, they're, the way I've been knitting their sweaters I've been knitting them kind of oversized so they fit for a couple years so they still have sweaters that they fit into or at least they did this past winter and this year's, this past year's sweater should fit them this year. So um, they are getting a little bit older and expressing interest in hobbies and other things. And so I have some present ideas that I would like to uh, send them. And so I decided this year I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from the knitting and then we can regroup and they can tell me if they'd like sweaters the following year. I will probably knit them some socks because feet are ever growing and maybe even a couple, um, maybe even a couple winter somethings. So that is kind of all the knitting there is. Let me take a quick sip of tea and I will talk to you about spinning. So I am spinning a from a roughly new to me dyer. I, can't, I still can't remember. I might have spun something else from her um, before, but this is the first time that I bought something and spun it from her. And it is called Enchantress. It is on Falkland. And it is just bright and well it's it's saturated and beautiful it's got um greenish teals it's got greenish greens it's got pink and charcoal and red um and it's just it's a really bright colorful braid and this is two ounces of it and i spun the other two ounces up this week i would be farther along but i'll tell you um what i spun instead next um but so this is half of it and my hope is that i will finish the other half of it this week and then i will get to ply it together um and we'll have to see how that goes because after i knit all day on saturday i don't know how much crafting i'll be doing on sunday i may need to let my hands rest a little bit um so we'll see about that um, and I would have already started on the second half, except that I ran out of yarn for my chicken. So um, the the little feathers that I showed you, um, where I said I was using Enchilada Night in Rambouillet, um, I ran out of hand spun. So I needed to spin up more hand spun to do the pinstripes. And so these are the singles. I leave these as singles, so I just need to wind this off today. Um, I purposely spin this a little bit thicker than my um, normal singles. I'm still not great at spinning thicker singles and I'm certainly not great at um, spinning with the correct tension so that they won't be overspun so they will be overspun but that's fine all the others have been um so I just need to wind this off and wash this and thwack it tonight um so that I have more so that I can work on more feathers for my chicken but I uh cranked that out last night this one cranks out pretty quickly because it's like I said it's much thicker and um, I'm trying to spin with lower twist which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work so that's kind of where I am with that but I will probably um I hope I will finish this spin this week um and actually I may even work on this a little bit on Saturday um one of the things that I found is that when I'm in knitting marathon mode um it's really hard to actually knit for 12 hours in a row I try and have a few different projects um, going so that I can kind of switch off between them. I will be doing mittens um, and I do have a pair of socks in progress that I might bring just for like a difference in one's worsted and one's fingering weight. Um, but I, in years past, I also have spun for a little bit during the day for an hour or two just because it's a slightly different motion of my hands. Um, and so, yeah. So I will be crafting a lot this week. I hope I have a lot to show you next week because I... Uh, have to fill 12 hours on Saturday. So I think that's all I have for you today. I hope that you're enjoying the changing of the seasons wherever you are, whatever season it's changing into. I hope that you're enjoying your crafting. Are you reading anything good? I am um, I'm reading a couple things that I really like. I just finished um, a uh, book called Bookshops and Bone Dust. 
and it is sort of a melding of um, uh, of Dungeons and Dragons um, with a little bit of romance, a little bit of um, LGBTQIA, and a little bit of mystery. It was kind of it was kind of a fun book. I mean, nothing super serious. And then I am currently reading a book called I think it's called How Far the Light Reaches, and um, it is a really interesting book about sea creatures of the deep. And the author is um, talking about well, not necessarily of the deep. She's talking about different creatures in the ocean. And then she's also sort of having a philosophical discussion about other things that are happening and things that are happening in her life. Um, so like world events and then also things that are happening in her life. And she's, I think she goes through um, 10 creatures that are, that live in the ocean and then sort of um, relates them to parts of her life or um, world events that she sort of, um, are, are milestones in her life. So it's really interesting. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I only have a couple hours left. I was, I listen to a lot of books on audiobook because um, I listen to them in the evenings. Wes goes to bed and I turn on my audiobook quietly and I sit and knit for a couple hours before bed. Um, and it's super relaxing and a really good way to listen to a lot of books. So that is what I'm doing, I will put the notes on the books in the show notes if you want to see them um, with links to where you can find them. And um, I think that's about it for this week. So I will say, um, as I always do, until I see you next time, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sifting, and I'll chat with you again soon. Bye.